This is about to be the most exciting video you've ever seen in your life. So today I'm going to show you how to take a keyboard that looks like this and sounds like this and turn it into a keyboard that looks like this and sounds like this. But before I show you, I'm going to have to ask you all to subscribe because 98.6% of you are not subscribed to my YouTube channel. This is all your fault and I'm blaming it all on you that you're not subscribed to a channel that you've never seen. Thanks. So we'll start off with a quick sound test of the old keyboard. Okay, that seems to be enough of that. Here, I'll show you the modifier keys. All right, so now it's time to get into the meat and potatoes. Check out this cool time lapse. I hope you enjoyed that time lapse because I'm not going to do it again. Instead, I'm just going to cut up clips because the time lapse took forever. So now all you got to do is struggle really hard with pulling the PCB and the plate out of your case. Not too bad. It's just really annoying. So yeah, struggle with that for a little bit. And then all you got to do now is pull all of your switches out. It's pretty easy. You just get a key switch puller and then follow the instructions. But seriously, uh, it's it's super easy. You just tweeze it, kinda, I guess. I, I don't know how to explain it, really. I built like two keyboards. Take, take what I say with a grain of salt. I'm using the GK64X PCB, and that has an extremely weird mounting system that I've never seen, mostly because I've only built two keyboards, but also because it's weird. The plate has standoffs, and the case has standoffs, but you don't mount the you don't mount the PCB to the case. You mount it to the plate, and then you mount the plate to the. It's weird, but yeah. So basically, we're gonna start off with taking the standoffs off. And here you can see that we don't want those. We want these. Those are the good ones. So yeah, we're gonna also drill holes here, here, and here. And you're gonna need to drill, drill bits and your case and your plate so yeah i'm showing you the standoffs again just in case you didn't see it the first eight times and now we're just going to drill it and then after you drill it it should look like this you're going to want to drill a bit that's a little bit bigger than the standoff so that it completely erases it from the face of the earth and then once it's flat on all of them you get a sharpie i don't have i i, I don't have sharpies i couldn't find one so here we're going to use a pen to mark this. Nope, we're going to use a pencil to mark this because pens don't work on metal, even if it's painted. So once you have all of the things marked, it should look kind of like this. You'll have you'll have your standoffs marked and then uh, you can touch your standoffs. It's really hard to drill through this. So instead of drilling through it, <laughs> I completely disregarded that and took snips and snipped it off. But for the rest of them, I did drill. I just had to use something to make like a little divot so that the drill bit wouldn't slide off. So yeah, as you can see, we've drilled all of our holes. And so now we can get to putting all the new fun stuff inside of the new fun case. I think I'm supposed to talk about the case here. This is a KBD fans uh, bamboo case. It's normally flat, but I put some cool little feet on it. So it's got like five degrees of typing angle. I know that it's five degrees because I measured it with a level on my phone. I'm gonna show you some O-rings. Just kidding, this is a keycap. It's flat. I don't like flat, that's why I added the feet on the keyboard. Uh, so these are O-rings, and we're gonna use these to mount the PCB to the case. Uh, keyboard on YouTube, I'll link it down in the description. He came up with this, I, I guess. I honestly, I don't know, did he create it? Or did he, I don't know. You don't need to drill that hole in the middle if you follow the keyboard guide because I think he skips that uh, sk skips the middle standoff entirely. I could be wrong. I don't know. Watch his video instead. So yeah, here's the spacebar. It's going to be super 
fucked up because we're not even going to mount it to the case. As you can see, it's got screw holes and we're not going to use any of those. Instead, we're just going to hope that it stays where it's supposed to and we're going to use the switches to keep it in place. Yeah, there's the holes, but also the stabilizers. The stabilizers I'm using are Everglide Pandas. They're clip-in stabs. This PCB doesn't allow screw in. Um, and I was getting some rattles, so I put some tape on the PCB. Another thing you need to make sure of is to not have a tight hole. If you're using a different case, you might get, uh, it might be a tight fit when you gasket mount it or O-ring mount it. Put your screw, put the, put the O-ring on the screw. And I like to screw it in to the O-ring. It actually helps. There's like threads on the screw because that's how screws work. Otherwise it'd be a nail, but it grabs on to the O-ring and then you can just let it do its thing while holding the O-ring and screwing it. So I guess don't let it do its thing. Anyways, put the screw through the PCB where it needs to mount and then don't autofocus because that's not cool. And then put another O-ring on the back side, and then you can screw again and it'll make the, the O-ring like sandwich a little bit better so that you don't have to worry about it falling off when you mount it. You just got to hold the back and then uh, do that. And so, yeah, I'm going to screw in these five standoffs, not the middle one. Another thing, another tip, this is an actual tip, not a joke at all use the middle standoff to line up your other screws because you won't be able to see them with all the screws in the hole here's me freaking out about something i don't i don't know what i'm freaking oh yeah the pcb like rattles whenever you tap on it in the middle because we don't have uh, the screw there but it turned out fine so don't worry about it okay bring the plate back you might have been wondering why we're drilling these holes if we've already mounted the pcb and that's so that if you ever need to take apart your keyboard you have holes to pull the screws out of the PCB and you don't have to take your switches out every single time you disassemble. That's literally the only reason. You can skip that, I guess, if you want. So now we're going to put our switches in, but I'm using a flush case. So the plate or like it's a low profile case. So as you can see, it's like the plate is flush with the edge of the case. So I was having issues, but basically you put some switches into the plate normally like in the corners and then maybe in the middle and then you just push them all down onto the PCB. But you gotta be careful because you might bend the legs. Just look through the holes and then line everything up and then you should be good. You don't wanna bend your switches on your pins. Make sure they're straight. Look at how straight those are. And then we're just gonna put all the switches in. All right, so we got all of our switches in. Thumbs up, right? I'm just kidding. I'm an idiot. I forgot to put in my stabilizers, so Take out the switches that need stabilizers. All right, now we got stabilizers. They're lubed already from the old keyboard. We're just gonna clip those in. You just gotta, you put the clips on the flat side and then the side that has like the weird shape on it, that's the side where the non-clip goes, I think. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyways, look at how stupid this space bar goes in. We're not gonna screw it into anything. We're just gonna Put the switches in there and hope to God that they hold. Forewarning, it's not gonna hold. If you ever pull your space bar off or your alt key, um, it's literally gonna pull that right up. I speak from experience. All right, so as you can see, our USB port is not stressed. It's just kind of high up there, but it's fine. All right, so now it's time to test the keyboard. So we're gonna plug it in. Look at all the pretty lights. Look how pretty. You can actually see those with the keycaps on, by the way. Look at this key test. We got the key tester, and we're gonna test all the keys. All you gotta do is press the keys, it's pretty easy. All right, the right arrow key didn't work, and that's because I'm a Neanderthal, and I pushed it in really hard, and we bent the pin. So I took some tweezers, and we straightened it out, and then I put it back where it came from. And uh, yeah, then we pressed it and it worked that time. All you got to do now, put your pretty little keycaps on and listen to a pretty little sound test. Now you stop. We're going to go back to the old keyboard for a sec. We'll flip between. All right, 
That's enough of a type in test. Time for modifiers. I don't know what what is going on here. Oh yeah. That's me getting stressed because the left side of the enter key sounds different than the right side. Don't know what's causing that. Still haven't figured it out. Don't really care. drum on the desk because you're done and you have a cooler keyboard now I have no idea if I'll make more keyboard videos if this if this like blows up and then I can afford to make more keyboards yeah I'll make some but if not this will probably be the only video on my channel and that's fine I hope you guys enjoyed it make sure to like comment and subscribe and on the off chance that I do make more videos you'll be there to see them all right see ya